Hi, and welcome back. We, Jean and I wanted to touch base more on Ohio's poor communities and what we meant by them. Um, yesterday, we talked a lot about kind of bigger cities, Cleveland, Columbus, and Cincinnati, and today we wanted to more talk about the rural areas in Ohio that we've been going to and why um, our initiative with Restoring Prosperity and looking at the core communities is important to, to rural areas as well. So Jean, I mean, where do you see that connection? Or how it's that what, what we call, it's called the county seat problem. Okay. Almost every county seat in Ohio has some industrial legacy. And every county seat is also critically important to the whole economic health of many of the residents in that county. So for if you live out in a rural township, you know, five, six miles outside of the county seat, probably somebody in your family works in the county seat. Just look at agriculture, for example. A whole whole lot of farmers out there, and I used to be a full-time professional farmer, so I'm very much aware of this. That they would live, they would they would have off-farm employment at the county seat. Okay. Okay. Now one of the reasons for it is a short commute. You have to get back in time to go on a farm, get you know chores done in the evening, maybe get a little bit of uh, harvesting or a little bit of um, planting done, cut some hay, bale some straw, that type of stuff, take care of the stock. Also for for the for the spouses. In many cases, that off-farm employment gives them the all-important health care insurance program. So, it, so for the county, we need to have vital county seats in Ohio. So, are you talking about county seats like Ashtabula and Piqua, or? Well, Ashtabula and Piqua, but we're also talking about the mission earlier. Yesterday, we talked a little bit about Kenton and Hardin County. Okay. It's a place of employment for many of the rural area. Uh, Wilmington, Washington Courthouse, okay? Um, and, I, and I say county seat, you know, yes, you can always find the exception to prove the rule, like Crawford County has both Bucyrus and Galleon. Okay. But most of those communities have, if I remember correctly, a legacy of heavy road manufacturing. You know, they used to make the machines that would pave our roads and road graders and things of that nature there. Okay. So they have a legacy of heavy, heavy manufacturing. Okay, so then how does that relate to the core communities that we're looking at then? Because we're relatively small in staff, even though we are partnered with Brookings, which is a huge national shop, but we're the feet on the ground. I figure out, we're, we have to divide, and you know, we can only look at so many. So 32, we think these 32, Ashtabula to Zanesville, okay, Marietta, Lima, Toledo, Akron, Dayton, Steubenville. Steubenville, Steubenville, that we can come up out of there with some common themes, common trends, okay? okay. It won't apply universally to everybody, yeah. but we think there's some things there that we can say, oh, we need to look at this. And at the state level, you know, we think this, this small tweak of this program may lead to benefiting all these, you know, these certain ones of these communities, but also Kenton and Hardin County. Okay, so there, there are somewhat different categories in the core communities we're looking at, where you have kind of the bigger cities, but then you also have different categories that are mid-sized and smaller, which are more county seat and rural. But we're looking right. at all of those we'll and trying to find the right policies for the right cities. You got it. Okay. Okay, well there you have it. And again, please send us any questions you have on um, restoring prosperity in our core communities.